Hello everyone and welcome back to Learning Hub. Ever wish your computer could find information based on what it is, not where it's stored? Like asking for the file about cats and it just knows? That's the magic of associative memory. I'm your host and today we're diving deep into this fascinating corner of computer architecture. Before we jump in, here's a question for you. What if your brain worked like RAM? Let me know in the comment section below and we'll get started. So what exactly is associative memory? Traditional RAM uses address. You tell it where the data is and it fetches it. Associative memory, also known as content addressable memory or CAM is different. You give it the data or part of the data and it searches its entire memory to find a match. Think of it like searching for a specific book in the library. In traditional RAM, you'd need the exact self and position. With associative memory, you could just say, I want a book about algorithms and the library magically finds it for you. And I'm sure we all wish our computers could do that. But why is this helpful? Imagine searching a database, doing pattern recognition, or even complex AI task. Associative memory can drastically speed things up. Now, we'll pick under the hood. The diagram shows the basic hardware organization of an associative memory. We'll break down each component. First of all, argument register. This n-bit register holds the data we're searching for. It's the query we send to the memory. Second is the key register. The key register is also n bits wide. The register holds a mask. This mask allows us to selectively search only certain parts of each word in memory. So we can search the entire word or only search certain bits. Associative memory array. This is the heart of the system. It's an array of m words, each n bits wide. Each row in the array represents a word stored in the associative memory. This is where all the data is stored. Match logic. Each word in the memory array has associated map logic. This logic compares the content of the word with the content of the argument register, considering the mask in the key register. And finally, the match register. This m-bit register stores the result of the match comparison for each word. If a word matches the search, the search criteria, its corresponding bit in the match register is set to 1, otherwise it's set to 0. Now, we'll see how the math logic actually works. The match logic for each bit can be implemented using a simple XOR gate and an AND gate and an inverter. The output of the XOR gate tells us if the argument register bit and the memory bit are the same. The AND gate then combines this with the key register bit. If the key register bit is 1, meaning we're considering this bit and the XOR gate output is 0, meaning the bits match, then the output of the AND gate is 1. We then AND together the outputs of all these bits, bitwise comparison circuits for a single word. If the result is 1, it means all the unmatched bits matched and we have a match. If we want to do an exact match, then we all set the key register bits to 1. This is super useful for comparing items that have a large number of identifiers. Suppose we want to find any word that starts with 101. We would load 101xxx into the argument register and 111000 into the key register where x means don't care bits. The match logic will then compare the first three bits of each word in the memory with 101 ignoring the rest. So how do we actually get the data out of this thing? Read operation. The read operation is where associative memory really shines. You provide the data you're looking for in the argument register and the key register. The memory performs the comparison and the match register indicates which words match. From there, you can select one of the matching words using some sort of priority encoder if there are multiple matches and read its contents. The location gets returned and the data can be accessed. It's that simple. And that's associative memory in a nutshell. It's a powerful tool for content-based searching, offering significant speed advantages in certain applications. So, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Learning Hub for more exciting tech content. What other computer architecture topics would you like me to cover? Let me know in the comments below. So, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.